All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Marika. I am the outreach coordinator of uh, Medical Wonders and welcome to Medicine Week 2022. This is the third, um, actually, yeah, this is the third day of the Medicine Week and we have Dr. Anjali with, here with us and I'll just go over some of the rules of this um, program. So, First off, um, you have to attend two or more calls of, um, from this week to actually get your attendance. And for even your attendance to verify, you have to submit a five to six sentence paragraph about the calls and what you've learned from all the doctors. So we have um, a different doctor every day. So this form or like this document that you send is um, should be sent through Google Classroom, so from the corresponding um, doctors. And the paragraph should be detailed. And along with your full name in the paragraph so we can check off. Anything else? Um, also for with the program, you will get, or with the with your assignments, you will get your certificate if you've attended two or more calls and you submitted your paragraph along with your hours. And the points below the green highlighted text is some of the points that you can add on your resume um, for attending these calls. Um, so what is Medical Wonders? It's a student-led nonprofit organization to educate and advise students about astounding medical procedures, careers, discoveries, and devices. We are a pretty big organization with four executive teams, researchers, editors, communicators, and graphic designers. And we have a number of members along with uh, 50 tutors and 10 college overseers. So it's over 300 plus. Um, people. And we've also collaborated with a lot of other nonprofits um, to make, you know, what Medical Wonders is. So what is, what exactly is Medicine Week? Every day this week, a medical professional or student will go on Zoom call with us for an hour presentation or introduction to our studies. And at the end, we'll have a Q&A session with them. So we also have um, our Instagram, which I'll show you at the end of this call, but you can also contact us with anything. And they also, all of our medical professionals also have their own Instagram accounts if you wanna ask more questions after this call. So all the record or the, all the calls will be recorded in our YouTube channel so that you can go back if you miss something for your assignments or you just wanna rewatch it. So that was about all, and I will stop sharing and let Dr. Anjali take over. Hi guys, it's really nice to meet you. I'm really excited to be spending this kind of afternoon with you and kind of talking about my journey to medicine and what I do as a psychiatry resident. So a little info on me, I'm a third year psychiatry resident. There's four years in all, so I'm closing in on kind of the end of it. Um, and I'm out here in um, Ohio in a program. Oh. Dr. Anjali, you're not sharing your slides, sorry. Oh, you're okay. I was just talking. I can start oh, the slides. Okay. okay. So we can get that pulled up. So I made a brief slideshow for y'all. You guys can see the PowerPoint? Yep. The background, awesome. Okay. So we can start off. So we'll be talking to you guys a little bit about psychiatry today. Here's a little bit of an agenda for you. Planning to talk about my journey to medicine, um, give you a little office tour of my, where I work, my office, um, a general day in the life of like what my work looks like and then have time at the end for a Q&A. So I feel like the big question to start off things with is often what drew me to medicine? I added this little picture of a family here because that was a big driver for me. My um, dad, when I was growing up as a kid, was really chronically ill and actually spent a good deal of time in and out of the hospital. 
Um, so I spent a lot of time visiting him and got to see kind of firsthand the impact like um, a doctor could have on the ultimately like the, the course of a medical illness that affects like a family and a loved one. Um, and I found it to be really interesting. And one of the most inspiring things I had experienced at that age, um, and that was a big thing that drew me towards wanting to also be able to have that kind of lead role in caring for patients, um, working through medical illnesses um, and be able to like lead a team in that way. So that was a big thing that inspired me to come to medicine. So my journey to medicine ultimately looked like this. I did four years of high school. Uh, I did a two year college um, accelerated program. It was called a BSMD program. So I completed a bachelor's of science at a designated college associated with my medical school. I went to school like all year round. Um, they kind of designated the classes we had to take and we had like certain academic requirements we had to meet to um, complete the program in two years and come away with like a bachelor's of science. And then once that was accomplished and like a, a certain MCAT score was accomplished, we could matriculate over to medical school where I spent like a general four years of medical school. In my third year of medical school, I found that I really loved psychiatry when I was able to rotate through it during clerkships um, and I never looked back. Now I'm uh, three years into my psychiatry residency and I've got uh, a bit over like one year to go. So some reasons I chose psychiatry over other fields. So the field focus, I feel like psychiatry for me was the most humanistic field in medicine. I really liked that I got to know patients um, as like people and not just like diagnoses. Um, like uh, I got to know them as people dealing with things like depression and anxiety and what kind of stressors cause those things in their lives versus just talking about like their diabetes. Um, so those were topics I enjoyed interacting with patients on more so than the others. And that was one thing that led me to it. Um, I also really liked incorporating therapy over just like medication management and kind of talking with patients about ways they can um, effectively like manage their own moods or um, anxieties, et cetera, and kind of like help them lead, um, help them learn about themselves in interesting ways that ultimately like give them a lot of power in terms of like approaching stressors and stuff. So that was a really big draw for me, uh, particularly also like the amount of time we got to spend with patients. I found I was on inpatient psychiatry able to spend the most time with patients compared to like all my other clerkships. And I really enjoyed that um, kind of, again, going back to the fact that it made it feel like a very humanistic approach that I could like sit down with someone and spend a good deal of time getting to know them before we um, led to like conclusions or treatment or anything. Uh, there's also sometimes a good deal of detective work involved in psychiatry, um, kind of calling for information and digging in charts and putting pieces together when um, we don't have necessarily like the most objective data. I found that really fun and like um, in a problem solving detective kind of way, I really enjoyed that. Um, and I find that I'm always learning in psychiatry. I find that even from patients, I'm always learning something new and I, I love that. Um, there's also a good deal of community involvement. So frequently, uh, especially in the program I'm in, we work with the community a lot in terms of like uh, patients who are marginalized or um, have severe mental illness or need significant community resources um, in terms of like help with housing, help with uh, social security food stamps, things like that. Uh, so I like working with those populations a lot and being able to um, have an active role in the community and see people progress successfully in the community is really meaningful to me and really hits on like my own uh, social work kind of initiatives that I've really enjoyed since high school. And then um, finally, like the pathology and medicine, I, I loved. I found the spectrum of pathology you see in psychiatry to be very interesting from um, mood disorders, depression, anxiety, uh, things we like hear more about to bipolar to like psychosis um, and addiction. I think it's a very interesting range of topics um, and I find all of them very interesting. And also, uh, Notably, compared to any other like uh, topic in medicine or field in medicine, I found I never really got bored reading up on psychiatry topics, like mental health topics, even like um, pathophys topics, which if you all have taken like molecular bio, um, some of that stuff can get really dense, but I still found it pretty interesting. So I thought that was something notable to myself that I could still enjoy like reading up on even dense topics of it. Um, and the fact that there's kind of always something interesting and new on the horizon, whether that's medications, um, different treatments, therapy interventions. So I like that it's a perpetually like growing field with like a lot of um, 
exciting new opportunities on the horizon. So the big question of what I do as a psychiatrist kind of in my day to day. So ultimately, I work with people to address struggles that are emotional. So struggles with their mood, with worry, anxiety, um, sometimes with connections to reality, um, and sometimes to addiction. So we work with a varying um, spectrum of kind of struggles with emotion and life. And I get to know people in like several life domains, which I really enjoy. So I get to know about their work, their interactions with people in their life, whether that's like loved ones or friends, um, how they interact at um, jobs outside, what kind of life stressors they've been carrying with them. I think it's really nice to see like a, a full fleshed story of a person and get to like have all of that be important information for treating them. I also get to talk about like medication and therapy options to address all of the above struggles. Um, and I also get to help people in emergent situations when kind of all of those emotional struggles reach a climax and questions of safety are apparent. Um, also, I get to increase awareness about mental health struggles and kind of advocate against the stigma that exists against mental health. I really feel strongly about both of those things. And I'm at a teaching hospital, so I get to teach and mentor students, whether that's medical students, college students, you folks here today. Um, I really enjoy that mentorship and teaching and giving back. So all of these things are things I enjoy and things I like to do as a psychiatry resident that I'm happy are part of my day. So kind of what a day in the life looks like. So the three kind of broad um, domains I like work in are the inpatient psychiatry setting, the outpatient psychiatry setting, and the emergency room, which is usually where I'm at for call shifts. So I thought we could break it down in that way because they all kind of differ. So in inpatient psychiatry, we work with patients who are in like a more acute setting, whether that's because they're very depressed, um, whether their psychosis is really uh, interfering with their ability to function or take care of themselves. Um, they're usually very acute and requiring inpatient care. So we see them on that side. Typically my day on the inpatient side would look like me coming in around 8 a.m. to pre-chart and pre-round. So pre-charting would just be me kind of looking through the notes from the night before on how things have went with the patient, if there's anything that happened, like um, they refused their medications or they had a phone call from family that they informed staff about or they had an interesting interaction with, fam um, with staff. So kind of looking to see how the night went for them and then sometimes also pre-rounding. So rounding would be me seeing patients with my attending typically, um, getting to check in with every patient on how they're doing from how the medication is going, how their symptoms that they presented with are evolving, um, if they notice any side effects, um, and if there's any kind of like developments in their case in terms of like um, communications with family, communications with court, um, kind of et cetera. So pre-rounding would be me going without my attending to do those things. And I usually pre-round on like patients who are newly admitted the night before um, or anyone who like seems to have like some dire need, like if they were acutely like aggressive overnight um, and needing maybe additional medications that the nurses can use to help calm them down. So that's usually my day for like about an hour. I'll read up on patients and see if there's anyone who needs to be seen. Typically my attendings come in just a bit later around nine o'clock and then we see patients essentially for a couple of hours. Um, anyone who's on our list will spend time with usually like, uh, it really varies on the patient, but it can be like 20 minutes to an hour per patient. Um, and then we usually leave the afternoon for like grabbing lunch, finishing notes, because documentation is like a ongoing facet of all these, all these domains. Um, also connecting with families to call them for either information or updates on what's happening with their um, loved ones and kind of finalizing orders so that would be like medications or um, things like their orders for discharge and going home and making sure their discharge plans or where they're going home, whether that's like a rehabilitation site to their house, to a group home, that those things are kind of squared away. Um, in the outpatient setting, which is where I'm primarily this year, um, third year of psychiatry year, basically doing outpatient all year. Um, I usually come in and see patients essentially around the clock. So I'll come in around 7.30. I start seeing patients at eight, um, whether that's for an hour or a half hour period. I take a break for lunch, catch up on notes. I'll make phone calls to um, usually patients like therapists to be on the same page in terms of medication management and therapy if I'm not the one conducting it. Um, and then I'll see patients through the rest of the day. Patients I see in outpatient are usually more um, stable, less acute, um, folks who are usually like able to take care of themselves, functioning 
pretty much normally in their day-to-day -day life, able to hold down their jobs and don't have a lot of like acute needs in that way, um, but are seeing me for things like medication management um, to affect their mood, anxiety, um, psychotic symptoms, et cetera, and sometimes therapy to address all of the above, but kind of without medication. And then lastly is the emergency room setting. So the most, um, I guess, subacute would be what I would call it. Um, in residency, we take call shifts where we're staffing the emergency room, um, usually from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. most days. On the weekends, we do 24s. Um, on the weekdays, we go after our work is done on the inpatient or outpatient unit. So usually there, we're evaluating patients who have come to the emergency room with um, acute concerns. They usually involve safety, so that's usually whether um, someone's feeling suicidal, unable to keep themselves safe, um, having thoughts about harming someone else or feeling homicidal. They seem very impaired to the point of not being able to take care of themselves. That can happen with depression, that can happen with anxiety, that can happen with psychosis or substance use, um, or they feel that things have gotten so bad that they would like to come into the inpatient psychiatric hospital. And so we assess those patients and determine kind of their disposition or ultimately where they go, whether they go to inpatient psychiatry, they go to a different facility, or they end up going home. Um, in that setting, we often will talk to patients, we'll talk to their families, we'll kind of call around if we need to in terms of like gathering information. This can be where like a lot of that detective work comes in. And then ultimately, so we're the ones kind of gathering all that information, putting together a presentation and deciding on a plan for disposition. Then we go over that with an attending um, and they'll agree or disagree, typically agree. And then we write notes on those. So that's usually our, our day after work, um, maybe like twice a week given. Um, it kind of depends on like how many people we have in the call pool at the time, but rounds out to about like once, twice a week, four times a month or something. So here's a look at my office. It's my outpatient office. It's uh, small. It's not technically mine. Um, I've inherited this and it's it kind of just like runs the course through the residence as they approach third year and they end up spending more time in outpatient. But here's a little look at it. I've got my couch, so that's where I see patients. The computer was where I document. I'm a big house plant lover. I have lots of plants. I tried to make this place look cozy. And I've got a bookshelf that I'm kind of filling with books that I found really helpful. So really small, but kind of trying to make it my own, make it a cozy place for people to talk about things that are pretty hard. Let's see. Okay, so that's kind of all I had. I wanted to open it up to questions. I will preface with the fact that um, I usually, uh, since this is going up on YouTube, I usually keep a lot of my information private on social media um, for my own like safety and privacy concerns. But if there's any like very personal, very specific questions, I'm happy to answer them in um, in email format. So I can pop my email in the chat. All right, so if anybody has any questions, you can either um, insert it in the chat or just like speak out. All right, I'll start off with some of my questions that um, I have for you. So I think the biggest one would be, I, we have a lot of people who signed up as a, um, a high school student and also college students, but majority are high school students. So any advice for like high school students that you have? Like maybe like from extracurriculars, because I know since I am a high school senior, I there are a lot of competitions for like colleges, you know, so especially for pre-med. So any advice for them? Yeah, so my ranging advice dates back to like when I was a high school student, it's, it's strangely been a good couple of years now. Um, but at the time, I often like recommended um, shadowing when you could. I am a bit lucky. My mom is a nurse. Um, so she spoke to people she worked with and said, hey, my daughter's interested in medicine. Could she come Could she come see you for a day or something and follow you around? And most of the people were pretty nice about, yeah, sure, why not? Um, honestly, I and apart from this, I also just like cold emailed hospitals that were local to me, asking in their like volunteer um, departments, I believe, if they had any opportunities for um, people interested in pre-med to come shadow and if they would let me. Sometimes I got no's, sometimes I got yeses. I felt like um, the worst I could get was a no, so might as well ask. So I often recommend like shadowing. Um, and also I know scribing is huge now. This was not around when I was uh, 
a high school student or I wasn't aware of it at the time, if that's the case, almost feels like a chance to get paid to shadow and then also learn a lot about um, the medical field and like functioning in the medical setting that's kind of beyond even like what you'll uh, get until you're like a third year med student essentially. So highly recommend if there are opportunities for that around to check them out if you can. All right, thank you so much. And the same type of question for um, college students, like undergrad or grad. Yeah, so in undergrad, um, similar things. Honestly, I do recommend like doing what you enjoy. I think medical schools and colleges in particular really liked seeing um, you being able to like follow your passions and being able to incorporate them. Cause I think it's important to be like a multifaceted human and be able to embrace all of the parts of the things you like. Um, like in college, I did like a choir and I really enjoyed it. And it was very like different from all of the other stuff I got to do that was like medical, but it was something I was passionate about and I was happy I got a chance to like make time for it. Um, medically, like focus things. Um, I, with a bunch of friends was volunteering pretty regularly at our local hospital. I was lucky cause it was pretty close to the college campus. And I think we did like most Saturdays there. Um, a lot of the hospitals are happy to take volunteers, especially I guess so now that um, it's not that we're like out of the pandemic, but I think we're trying to normalize opportunities a little bit more and offices are kind of more open for things like volunteering and whatnot. So I think that also like volunteering in other settings that are like medically acute, that could be like nursing homes sometimes. Um, there are many camps that happen if there's, if you like enjoy working with kids or even like adults, um, there are several like camps for different um, subsets of kids, whether that's, I have a friend who like uh, loves going to a type one diabetes camp that, it, that happens every year. I have friends who go to a camp that's primarily um, taking kids with cancers. Um, a friend that goes to one that has primarily like adults who have developmental delay. So kind of several opportunities in terms of like what you feel like you'd enjoy the most to, to investigate. All right. Um, so did you so I just wanted to ask about BSMD programs out of high school. Um, do you think it's worth it? Like, did you ever try, you know, just like talk about it, elaborate it? Yeah, and I can talk about that. And I see Hafsa messaged about the same thing. So I can talk about that. So um, I did the BSMD high school route, um, sorry, right out of high school, I applied my junior year, I think, probably my junior year and that was accepted around my senior year. Um, went straight to high school, wow, went straight to college for that two year route and then it was all year round and we took like a large course load of um, courses, medic, like very um, science heavy. Um, and I'll be honest, it was quite a lot. Um, during the time, I know I was very stressed most of the time. Looking back, uh, I'm happy I did it. I'm glad it kind of saved me those two years. Um, a lot of my friends mentioned like financially it was a very good move. Um, at the time that wasn't necessarily my thought. It was more so that I, this was like a path that I knew I wanted to go on. Um, and this kind of offered me a very streamlined way of going about it. And I, like I said, it was a tough kind of two years, but it was something I could get through and ultimately go to medical school. I would recommend, I think if it's available, I think kind of looking into it, I know there's like several kinds of BSMD programs kind of throughout the uh, states. There's also like BSDO programs now um, and they offer kind of a variable, uh, a variable um, amount of like benefits, including some of them offer that you don't have to take the MCAT. My program did have us take the MCAT, although we only had to reach like a required score, um, which was lower than most because by the timeline we were supposed to take it, we wouldn't have taken, I think it was biochemistry. So they kind of tried to buffer for that fact and we had to like teach ourselves biochemistry, which we did still eventually have to take. Um, yeah, so variable stresses and like variable costs and benefits in terms of like, you might be able to surpass something for the time. And if that's something you feel like would benefit you, definitely a worthwhile option to look into. I think I would recommend it to anyone looking into the programs they have now. Um, kind of the things that I like did in preparation for that I feel like made my application strong for the BSMD program were that um, I had worked with a lot of docs in terms of shadowing at the time. 
and I had, I think, like a letter written from one who I'd worked with a significant amount of time. I think they were a recommendation letter from me along with like a letter from one of my science teachers who helped me prepare for like interviews for that program. So I think, and like um, my extracurriculars were very varied in high school, I like did a lot of arts. Um, but it was also part of like um, the pre-med group at my school. Um, and I feel like academically I was uh, in a general range of like the folks who would therefore like apply to pre-medical college stuff. Um, so I think the things that really stuck out were like the things that would vary, which were the extracurriculars and being involved in like a good amount of shadowing, I think like showed my kind of like dedication and like pursuit of the medical field ultimately. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was like about to say from like the previous thing that you mentioned about like nursing school, I mean, nursing homes and stuff, volunteering at those, I am actually volunteering at one. So that was really helpful for, I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. No, I might assume just, I'm having some technical problems. Hold on, mm -hmm. let me fix it. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually volunteering at one and I think you can start from like um, high school if like just like call them and like ask them. So that was a really good point and about like the BSMD programs too. Um, uh, I just wanted to ask like, so was there any like other study methods that you use for like MCAT because I know it's like really competitive right now. Um, did, if the any like um, apps or like a study method that you like really was like your favorite thing in high um, in medical school or right even now? Yeah, so I have noticed after seeing like a lot of getting a lot of questions on MCAT um, and kind of trying to be like, I don't know, aware of like the resources that aren't there now. I've noticed it's evolved a lot since I took the MCAT. Um, back when I took it, I took the Kaplan course because I knew of the Kaplan course from when I studied for like ACT, I think. Um, and I had like a good experience with them and I felt like the way they um, put forward stuff made sense to me in terms of like I did like the the course that offered like online teaching of topics, as well as like um, options for getting the question bank and everything. For me, I liked having like uh, the virtual lectures. I thought they were really helpful in terms of like hearing and like seeing and having someone talk through a lot of concepts um, and helping those be cemented. But I think through medical school also, I found that like the best way for me to prep for things was just kind of to get a lot of exposure to questions, which now I know I did a lot of UWorld in med school. Now there's a UWorld for MCAT, I believe, and like kind of a bunch of other question banks, which I think is helpful. I think getting into the um, kind of like the rhythm of like seeing how they ask questions, being able to like read questions as like a active test taker and everything. I think that's really beneficial because ultimately the test is um, a test of knowledge, but also kind of like a test of like test taking and endurance. So I think getting more practice questions is really beneficial. And I know the last thing I did before I took my MCAT was look at the AMC questions. I think they offer like, um, man, I forget but they, you could like buy like, I don't know, four sets of questions and they had something else. I always recommend people to do those last because those are like literally from the place that made the MCAT. So like they should be the most in style, like what you would see on the actual exam. Um, and I don't know if there's Anki for MCAT, um, but essentially that was like a flashcard um, variable review kind of thing for MCAT. So if you're into flashcards, if that's something you've liked in the past, it could be like a good resource to look into. Anki, I guess, would be an app. At the time, we didn't have a lot of apps. Um, so um, going with like your day in life as a psychiatrist, how do you deal with like stressful days? You know, you probably have like a lot of patients who have like really acute like um, disorders and stuff. So how do you deal with those? Um, that's a really good question. I think this is important. Finding ways to deal with stressful situations is notably like my whole job, <laughs> but also something I have to work on myself. And like everyone has to work on in every setting. Um, typically in the moment I do what I can. Um, and then I make sure I can set aside time for myself when I go home to like lean into the things I really like that are outside of medicine. I'm a huge proponent of um, 
the fact that like, uh, I love psychiatry. I think it's wonderful. I think it's like my calling and what I'm best suited to do. But at the end of the day, it is my job. Um, and it's not my like primary soul definition by any means. Um, I also like, uh, I spend a lot of time. I have a wonderful boyfriend. I have a good group of friends. I actually love my uh, co-residents. We're friends outside of work. We spend a lot of time together, like outside of work, either decompressing or just doing fun things um, like plant shopping. I went plant shopping the other day with some of my co-residents. Um, I like to get movement in mostly like when I feel like I want it. I love going on walks and listening to audiobooks, cooking, um, watching TV, which is I think the most common one, something good on Netflix um, and crafting. So I make, and like seeing my family. So I make sure to make time for um, any of the above, even if it's just like 30 minutes or less in my day that I said, like I dedicated this time to myself. It's something I really wanted to do. It's usually like a good way for me to recoup. And I usually set aside like more than that, which is I'm grateful in residency. I have that opportunity now for sure. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to like um, tell you guys, if you have any questions, feel free to like leave it in the chat. I'll say, um, I'll ask her about it. I'll read it from the chat. Uh, I know I'm asking a lot of questions to her, but um, so other questions I, so you chose psychiatry over all the other fields in medicine. And I know you have like a little bit of um, like a family connection to it. But how does psychiatry particularly like differ from the other fields of medicine? Medicine, like why did you um, choose to pursue that, other than your uh, finance, like like family circumstances and about your father? Yeah. So actually, my dad was like uh, very medically complex and like chronically ill, um, and I actually ended up just not like surpassing that completely and going to psychiatry. Uh, so mainly like pulls to psychiatry for me uh when i i never rotated in it i never shadowed in it as like a student or anything i in fact like it never was on my radar i thought it was going to be like a too like something that was too confidential for like anyone to get to shadow or students to get into um but in medical school you rotate through essentially everything um you get eight core rotations your third year and some rotations in your fourth year um and it was my first rotation and i just fell in love with it. I thought it was the best. I, I loved that I got to talk to patients about like what I found to be like resonating with me, like true issues in a day-to-day -day life, like not talking to them about like their cholesterol or their diabetes or their blood pressure. Like, are you doing lifestyle modifications? Which I do talk to them about, but in a different context. I liked talking to them about like the harder things, um, like what got them down, what are their stressors, um, how have they been dealing with it? Um, what kind of led them to this point in terms of like what kind of a life they've led, what circumstances they've um, experienced up until then, whether that's like abuse or growing up in like dysfunctional households, um, a whole slew of things and getting to know a person like kind of very holistically before saying, okay, maybe this is like a good approach we can take going forward to help you um, tackle your stressors and improve your circumstances. So I found, I found that to be really meaningful. Um, and then like delving more into psychiatry, I liked the medication, I liked the pathology. Um, I liked learning about it. I felt like I could continue to learn about it and not be bored um, or find like reading really, really uh, difficult to engage in. Um, so it felt like a really good fit for me. And I did get another message from Hafsa who mentioned, um, really enjoyed your advice on the extracurriculars and shadowing for high school students. Many of us are doing the same activities. so. Do you know any tips on how to stand out to colleges? So I feel like for this one, I'd go back to, um, I know everyone's kind of, like I said, doing the same thing, shadowing, working in um, nursing homes, uh, scribing, I know is a thing now. So those are like the big tiers of like general, like getting into medicine and being able to do those things. I really think um, following things that you really enjoy in terms of extracurriculars um, sets you apart in terms of like showing that you have passions outside of medicine too, that like you're a holistic person um, and I feel like uh, not much, not enough advice is given in terms of like, you should also pursue those things. Like in, in high school, I, <clears throat> sorry, I was uh, in drama club, I was in show choir, I was in like multiple choirs in high school. I did academic debate, uh, just kind of like an array of things. And they were like all very like, um, not necessarily connected, but just things I really enjoyed doing along with like that other stuff. Um, 
and I got to talk about those things at interviews and stuff. And I felt like that was the passion you could show on like topics was what made me stand out. Even like now when I interview, um, we interview for like residents to come to our program for the following years. Even when I interview residents for the program or help interview like my med school and stuff, uh, I feel like the things I usually take away are like those unique things that uh, seemed to be like uh, things people were really passionate about that made them stand out, those extracurricular extracurriculars that didn't necessarily like have to have something to do with medicine, but that they could speak about really passionately. I could tell like this was something they really enjoyed. That would be my advice, like following anything else that also is something you really enjoy. Okay, that was very helpful. I also got another message from Hopsa, and I know that you, um, as you said, you've um, interviewed a lot of medical students and residents, incoming residents. So do you have any tips on how to stand out on, um, how to stand out among all the other interviewees, especially as a high school student or also as a college student? A good question. I feel like I'm gonna be like a broken record. Um, my biggest advice when people are interviewing is always just um, to be yourself, like the most yourself you can in an interview, because there's no one like you, you're a unique person and getting that across in an interview is something that like will be impactful and like something you leave an impression of on the person you're interviewing with. Um, I also recommend when I was interviewing for like the BSMD program, I was approached actually by a teacher who was interested in like doing mock interviews with me, which I thought was really helpful. I don't know if that's like an ongoing thing in high schools. I know some um, high schools have like guidance counselors who offer mock interviews and stuff, um, or at least can like direct you to the resources of like general questions that you can be prepared for when it comes to interviewing. Might be worthwhile looking into that. And then when it comes to like um, preparing answers for like those kind of um, not generic, but like the questions that are very common when it comes to interviewing, um, just being able to like kind of link it back to things you're passionate about, whether that's in medicine or outside, um, and getting kind of that spark to come through when you're talking about those things in interviews, I feel like leaves good impressions on folks. So, um, a lot of high school students and also a lot of college students have like extra extracurriculars that are like kind of the same thing. So can you talk a little bit how you stand, stood out from all the other um, people who did like drama club or anything else in high school? Like that's like kind of the same. Like how did you stand out? That's a good question. So notably, like I didn't interview for um, college per No, I didn't interview for college. I didn't interview technically for medical school. The interview process was like very, um, cohesive and linked. So I kind of felt like it was one and all. Um, but in high school, when I was trying to stand out, I, compared to like the other folks who, to be honest, there weren't a whole lot of people in drama club applying to like science. Uh, well, a lot of them went into engineering actually, but not necessarily a lot of them going into medical school from my um, high school. But I tried my best to kind of share my experience and see how like what I took away from like those experiences. Um, like drama club was really enjoyable, but also like it helped me in terms of like um, uh, help like curb my like public speaking anxiety that I had. It was like a good way for me to like put myself out there in almost a performative sense um, and tackle that and feel more comfortable in that. Um, also like being part of a team is huge in like drama club particularly. Um, and talking about how that felt like a strong suit for me in terms of that being like a really good quality I felt was something ultimately that would help me in the workforce or further in like my medical career. So kind of looking at, at it from like that aspect in terms of like, what have you taken away from this experience that you feel like is very formative apart from even just enjoying it? And then I did get a message. How are ways you can handle the tech going into medical school? So I am unfortunately not the best person to talk about uh, handling finances and debt. There are wonderful people who they keep, uh, send, who send us emails about um, financial planning and everything. They've talked to us through medical school. They've talked to us through um, even residency. Now I have a financial planner that's like designated to me for this residency through the hospital. Uh, I, I always just end up telling folks like, 
typically none of us get through medical school without a bunch of like coming out with a bunch of debt and it's like an anxiety provoking experience but ultimately like it will be paid <laughs> like once you're um, through residency and like an attending it will get paid back there are several like ways to do that i know um public loan forgiveness is like one of them serving in like a distinct um, hospital or setting for like a set amount of years for your loans to be forgiven if they're like very very surmountable they're also very payable on like eventually like down the line an attending salary and no one's going to ask you to like you know take the shirt off of your back to like pay your loan for sure i feel like there there's a lot of misconceptions on like how to manage or how impending the debt is once you get to like pass medical school and like into like a, a job with salary so i don't have the best advice on how to handle it but more so reassurance that you will be able to handle it sorry Nafisa. it's fine <laughs> All right. Um, did you get any other questions or? Did. Um, can you talk about how you balanced your personal social life with studying? Was it stressful? I'd like to know how long it took to complete assignments and perhaps a general description of how it was as a medical student. Tough question, but um, notably, I'm a no, uh, like a baseline anxious person, so all of the above was stressful. <laughs> um, but definitely like balancing and like time management was like one thing to like help all of that stress in terms of balancing like social life and um, studying. I know in medical school, typically like my schedule included like taking one, at least besides the weekend, like one designated day off a week. Um, that was usually like Friday and my like friends and I would plan something we would do after like all of our lectures and all that um, to go enjoy. Uh, and having kind of that like scheduled time fit in, I think really helped. Um, Kind of spacing out all of the other studying it, it's definitely like an intensive process and it's hard to like say i don't i don't know anyone who gets away from that in terms of like studying less or anything i think so typically like my medical school times like the first two years are the ones that are more so um didactic or the ones that you're studying a lot in so for those typically like half of the day was spent in lecture and the rest of the day was spent like reviewing those lectures and studying up on like either pre-studying on like the lectures we we're gonna get the next day or like following up on things we've done before along with like incorporating questions so it was an intensive process assignments we we didn't really have we went to lectures like several different classes where like every semester and we eventually like studied for like a test that was like maybe every two months every three months depending on like what the like what the module was about. So like anatomy, it was every two months or something, we would go through a whole body like system. And then we'd take a test along with like a practical about like the parts of the body we should know in terms of like the cadaver pinnings. I think, I think what really helped me was like scheduling in that like day off as like a really big benefit and like taking like a weekend or two off a month to go visit my family. And then most of the other time was like spent studying, but typically I also took like an hour off to like go to the gym and walk or like walk around my neighborhood or something and like listen to something. Um, and meal times were like non-negotiable times where I didn't study. <laughs> so kind of fitting in like a schedule and like working into what works for you was really beneficial in terms of like balancing all of it and making sure there was both time for obviously meals, some kind of movement and like time for social things, whether that's with friends or with family was big. So like, how did you get motivated to actually like, complete your schedule for throughout the day or like throughout the week? Good question. So I know this is also, I feel like a broken record in medicine. Um, that motivation is fleeting, but discipline is like resounding. So which, you know, the motivation is like really high in the beginning, you're ready to do all the things. Um, and I would also schedule in mental health days for when I felt like, man, things are hitting the wall really hard. I really can't do this today. Um, I need to have a break. So kind of the breakup of my schedule included like one or two mental health days if I needed it. Um, apart from that, kind of just like showing up for the other stuff, if motivation was really low, like showing up for like that dedicated time that I said, okay, from this time to this time, I will be doing this. And once it's done, at least it will be done. And I can move on to something else. Um, that was kind of how I kept going, I guess. All right, that was helpful. Uh, if you guys have any last minute questions you can ask right now and I think I'm going to present my screen.
for like any wrap up like topics, I guess, slides. Uh, maybe ask me a personal question. So I'm just going to direct it to my email. And apart from that, if you guys have questions, feel free to ask them. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to share my screen, Dr. Anjali. Mm -hmm. Oh, this means I have to stop sharing. Sorry. There we go. Okay. So this is just like the question thing. So I just wanted to um, direct you to our social medias. So we have a TikTok and also an Instagram and obviously the YouTube channel where the recordings are uploaded. And um, so these over here to the side is um, where like the, like the tags. And then all our Instagram is very important because all the updates go over there. So if you wanna follow it right now, and that is about all. So you can obviously leave questions to on, your, um, on her Instagram and also her um, email if you have any personal questions. Um, and that is all for today. Thank you so much for coming here and for your time. I know you were very busy with like schedules and everything. Um, so, and thank you all of you to attend, um, for attending this meeting too. All right. Thanks so much for having me guys.